Hi everybody, this is Pastor Ken Brookins, President and Founder of Back to the Rock Ministries, and I invite you to stay tuned in for the next 30 minutes for a life-changing message from the Word of God. Our word for today from the Word of God is found in Romans, the 8th chapter, in verse 11. The Bible says, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Today I want to talk to you about resurrection connection. Resurrection connection. Let's pray for a moment. We'll get right in the Word. Father, we thank You for today. Thank You for the Word quickening uh, just becoming alive to us in our spirit, man. Father, and just uh, speak through me. Anoint the ears to hear, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to talk to you about uh, being led by the Spirit uh, and also the resurrection. And I kind of wondered how that would tie together, but I'm telling you it does wonderfully. That's the reason why I'm calling this message the Resurrection Connection. Do you know because He lives we can live. Because Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave, we also conquer death, hell, and the grave. Because He wins, we win also. And that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, if you're born again, if you made Jesus the Lord of your life, that same resurrection power also dwells in you today. And if you don't have that resurrection power, if you've never been born again, then today is a great day to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. I want to talk to you about back in the Garden of Eden when God walked with man in the cool of the day. Uh, man was clear to hear. Uh, there was not a communication problem between God and man. They spoke. God gave man his assignments. And man carried those out. And things were going really well. Uh, Adam was naming the animals. God uh, took a rib from himself, from Adam, and created him a wonderful wife by the name of Eve. Things are going good in the garden. Things are being blessed in the garden. Things are well in the garden until another voice came alongside and began to speak. Up until that point, communication was right on. There wasn't any difficulty hearing what God had to say to man. He was clear to hear. There was no static in the line. There was no disconnection, you know, from listening to the Lord. But when the other voice came in, when Satan possessed that serpent in the garden and began to bring doubt and unbelief, into the voice and into the mind of Eve, she ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which God had communicated to them loud and clear not to eat of that tree. She gave it also to the man, and the man did eat. From that moment forward, communication, there was a breakdown in communication. There was static in the line. The lines were down. Sometimes the line were, was completely dead. It was hard to hear what God had to say anymore. There was, instead of faith, there was fear. There was insecurities now leading man. There was fear and insecurities and doubt and shame and blame and guilt and condemnation now leading his self, leading that man, leading that woman, where before it was God leading them, God speaking to them in the, in the cool of the day, and man obeying, and it was good. But things are bad at this point in time. Man now begin to be led, not by his heart, but by his head. He began to be led by logic. He began to be led by fear and doubt disbelief instead of believing is seeing or seeing is believing was no longer faith in operation now it was I have to see it in order to believe it so there was a communication problem man was now head led fear and doubt was paving his way God 
had a problem. I like to say it this way. Houston, we have a problem here. What's the problem? Man is no longer in communication with God. Man now is lost, hits his way, and communication lines now have static in them. No longer clear to hear. So because of that, man became disconnected from God. Now man is lost. And communications, as I said, is down. Man is now listening to his five physical senses. He has uh, no other way to communicate, no other way to, to be led down here. But what, what you see and hear and taste and smell and, and so on and so forth uh, and touch. Man has now become carnally minded and carnally led. So the, the problem of it is God's got to somehow get his communication restored to mankind. He has to once again begin to operate in this realm and find out how to communicate. Well, God is all-knowing. He knows how to fix this problem, but it was not an overnight problem. It wasn't an overnight situation or remedy either. So, God has to begin to now bring forth things on the outside to lead man. And, and I, I say it like this. God now, because the messages have been scrambled from God and man, God now has to have a decoder to help him out. How, who was those decoders? Well, if you study the Word of God, we know that the priest, the prophet, and the king were specially anointed to help lead and guide God's people. So the priest, the prophet, and the king in the Old Testament began to be anointed by the Lord, to give direction to man because man is no longer being led from heart to heart he's being led by his five physical senses fleeces also in the old testament were used as we see and study uh, uh, about the story of gideon and the fleece uh, that's an old testament practice it's not a new testament practice even though i know a lot of believers that still do what's called a fleece that's also an outward way of being led, and it's not, a, it's not always a good way to be led because the enemy also can uh, operate on that outside realm. So God's mission is to begin to get inside of man again, and so he has to do certain things to lead him uh, until we get to that point and place that, that uh, I'll, I'll show you here in a few minutes, also in the Word. Also in Exodus... If you study Moses and Moses being the deliverer and, and, and Moses and Pharaoh being the type of the devil and Moses was uh, used to lead uh, God's people out of that bondage. And once they got over into the wilderness side, then God had a fire by uh, night and a cloud by day. You remember that? It was a fire and a cloud. And that's a type of the Holy Ghost. Still on the outside of man now, but still leading man that way. God had the cloud on the outside. He, he wants the cloud on the inside. Amen. And we'll see how God begins to do that in a little bit. But sin blocks and scrambles the hearing from God. Now sin causes you to hear really clear from the devil. But it causes a static in the line when it comes to listening to God. So when there's sin, and that's what happened in the garden, when man disobeyed God, sin came in. Man was in rebellion against God, and so he got disconnected from his spirit to God's spirit. See, the Bible says that man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in a body. And God originally was created, uh, creating man to hear him spirit to spirit or heart to heart. So that's what God was doing when he created man. It was spirit to spirit. But because of sin, now he's on the outside. Man is disconnected from God. Man has fallen. He, he picked up a new God along the way called the devil and, 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 and disconnected his relationship from God. So, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, and I'll read this to you. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart or spirit. Lean not into your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Let me tell you what the Word of God is saying right here. It says, Do not lean... To your own understanding. 
or anyone else's understanding as far as that goes. So that's telling me that in the New Testament, something happened. Something's different now. Because Jesus went to the cross. Because Jesus hung on the cross and hit our sins were nailed to himself on the tree. The Bible said he became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him, in Christ Jesus. So Jesus took upon us that punishment by, by taking all our sin and, and becoming sin for us, and then He suffered the consequences. But three days later, praise God, because Jesus was innocent, Jesus was raised from the dead. Not only just from the grave, not only just from that tomb. I'm telling you right now, the Bible says as Jonah was in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights, so is the Son of Man in the belly of the earth three days and three nights. Jesus went to hell for you and for me. Because that's what happens when sinners die. They go to hell and the Bible said that Jesus became sin for us. In other words, He took our place. He took our punishment but because he was innocent, God raised him up from the dead. And now, praise God, if that same spirit raised Christ from the dead dwells in you through the new birth, he will quicken your immortal bodies or make alive your immortal bodies. And now God is restoring once again our ability, praise God, not only to have heaven for our home, not only for that uh, relationship between God and us to be back together, but we can hear from God. The Bible says, My sheep know my voice, and the voice of the stranger they do not follow. God and man, once again, through the new birth and through the resurrection, caused me and caused you, if you're saved, to begin to hear again, begin to know again what God's saying to you. And, and I like what Paul said, I know whom I have believed. And I'll, I'll touch base with that in just a few minutes. But in Proverbs, it tells us not to lean. It didn't say don't use your understanding. It just simply says don't lean to it. Instead, we're supposed to trust, rely, and lean uh, with all our hearts or our, all our spirit. So that's where God wants to bring us. Bring us back to that heart-to-heart -heart connection that we lost in the garden when mankind sinned. And that's why I'm talking about the resurrection connection because when Jesus rose from the dead, we were able to get reconnected with God again and begin to fellowship with Him, walk with Him, and talk with Him and begin to once again to understand what He's saying. But it's a heart-to-heart -heart communication because now the cloud, uh, before the cloud was on the outside, before the fire was on the outside, but thank God through the new birth, the cloud is now on the inside of me, praise God. The fire is now on the inside of me. The Holy Ghost now resides on the inside of me. And He's leading me from the inside out, not from the outside in. And that's the way it is. Praise God. Somebody say amen. So we're not to be led outwardly, we're to be led inwardly. It's the reason why I don't fleece. I used to fleece, I understood fleecing in the Old Testament. I thought that was something that was all through the Word of God. I can't see it in the New Testament about fleecing. You begin to fleece, you take a risk of getting fleeced. Amen. But let me give you uh, just a couple uh, examples that might help you. Uh, when it comes to being led, we're not supposed to be led by money. We're not supposed to be led by our heads, our reasoning, our logic, our understanding. We're to use those things, but not misuse those. That's not what I'm supposed to be leaning to. And, and so I've, I've, I've pastored for a number of years. I've been in ministry 30 years, pastored full-time for over 20 years. And I've seen it time and time again. People will leave the church that God has called them to for a better paying job. So that money, that wallet, that, that, that checkbook is influencing their leading. And then they get over there into that realm of, of leaning to their own understanding, leaning to their wallet, and, and finding themselves, they get in trouble because then they get out of the will of God. And then they struggle and they wonder why. Well, it was a better paying job. How come I don't have as much now as I had before? Because you're out of the will of God. You're no longer listening 
to that still small voice or that inward witness, God leading you on the inside. Well, people will say, well, I had to marry her. She was just so pretty. Well, what, what's in her heart? What's in his heart? You know, people say, well, I, I just had to have that person in the praise team at church because they, they sang so good. Well, what did God have to say about it? You know, and I, I see this time and time again where, where people are being led by their head. They're led by their head. They're led by their head. They're led by logic and reasoning. And that is not scriptural to do. We're not to be led that way. Uh, Samuel went to the home of Jesse. Uh, and Samuel was the prophet in the Old Testament. You read the book of uh, Samuel and you'll begin to see where uh, King Saul had disobeyed God and God was tore that kingdom away from him. And now Samuel's supposed to find uh, another king. He's supposed to uh, anoint another person in his place. And God had sent him to the house of Jesse. He sent him to the house of Jesse and he, Samuel the prophet said, Gather all the kids together. Gather all your boys. I'm going to walk past them. And, and, and the one I anoint is going to be the next king of Israel. And so here it is. Here comes the first, the eldest. And he must have looked strong. He must have looked like he was king material. I don't know what that looks like exactly. But to Samuel, he said this in his heart. This must be the one. And he, and he had that older brother walk before him. And there was no anointing. No unction came from Samuel. And, he, he, you know, and then the next one came by. And the next one came by. And finally, all of those sons went by him. And Samuel said he was puzzled. Because there was no connection at that point. And, but, but the first thing he said when he saw uh, Eliab was, this must be the one. What was the first instinct was leaning to your own understanding. He looked the part of a king. But there was no connection. So he did not lean that direction. He's still leaning and trusting in the Lord. So all the, all the sons walked by him. There was no witness that anyone was there. And he finally turns to Jesse and says, Jesse, is this all the boys you have? Is this all your sons? Because God was leading him to this family. He says, well, Jesse said, the father said, yeah, I have one more. I can just kind of see him pull him back the curtain. Yep, he's out there with the, sh that, the young one. Yeah, we got a young one out there. He's kind of... Yep, he's out there with the sheep. I got one more, and, and uh, the prophet Samuel said, "We're not going to we're not going to set until you bring him in. Somebody go get him, bring him in. I want him to stand before me. I want to know if that's the one." So here he comes. This is the youngest son, ruddy, handsome-looking guy. Apparently, not all that big. Didn't even look like maybe what a king should look like. It didn't matter about that. Because God said this in that chapter, in the book of Samuel, he said, Man looks at the outward appearance, but God judges the heart. God looks at the heart. And when young David came before Samuel, the anointing came upon Samuel. The witness of the Spirit came upon him, and he took the oil, and he dumped it on his head, and he would be the next king of Israel. Praise God. So, what does it mean? What does it mean to be led by the Spirit? What does it mean to have a resurrection connection? Have that connection with God and man? Well, it's following the inward witness. Following that, uh, I like to say it this way, following that gut feeling that you get on the inside of your heart. It's just like a gut witness. It's a gut feeling. A guy might say it that way. A lady might say it a little bit more dignified. Well, I just, I just knew that I knew that I knew. You know, sometimes women are very intuitive and, and they know something and they'll try to tell us guys what they're getting. And many times we're leaning to our own understanding and we miss it. But thank God we're getting there. Praise God. We're growing. All of us are growing in the Lord, I trust. Let me tell you about one story that happened in my life, and then I'll get ready to uh, share a couple quick scriptures and, 
and bring this to an end. But listen to me because some of y'all need this really bad. We all need this really bad. But some of you are going through some things. Some of you are, are right now in a crossroad. You're not quite sure which direction to go, whether to, to move, to stop, to go left or to go right. You need to follow that inward witness. If the spirit of truth is inside of you, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. Look here at verse uh, 16 in Romans 8. It says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we're the children of God. Verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So the Holy Spirit Himself bears witness to our spirit. So this is a spirit-to-spirit -spirit communication. And this is where God wants to bring us to, where He's leading us and guiding us on the inside. When I went to pastor my first church, I mean, this was in, back in 1981. And uh, they had, uh, had some different guest speakers that came in. And they had a revivalist that was lined up to come in. Well, uh, at that, about that same time, everybody got the witness that I was to be the pastor. So they had this, this evangelist already lined up to speak. So we just said, go ahead, let him come. So he came. He preached. And I'm telling you, it was great. Uh, the church was growing. People were getting saved and healed and filled with the Spirit, delivered. It was a great week. It was the end of the last night. I mean, it was coming to the close of that last night. And I was going to shut the meeting down because I had a witness to shut it down. Uh, because the week was up. And that was he was supposed to be here for a week. And so somebody came over to me. And in fact, some of the leadership came. And they said, we want him here one more week. What's it going to hurt? What's it going to hurt? Let's just leave him here one more week. And on the inside of me, uh, I'm not saying it was words. It was a witness to say no. I had a... What, what I call a check or a red light. <laughs> Sometimes I use that term. I, I didn't have a go to do it. But I felt pressured here. I'm new. I'm listening to the, to the understanding of people. Listen, pastor, our church is growing. We just, what's, come on, one more week. Let's, let's, let's go for it. One more week. The Spirit of God's moving. And I, I reasoned it out. And I said, all right, we'll do one more week. I want to tell you what, that week was the longest week of my life. That evangelist had purposed in his heart that he was tired of traveling. He saw a great opportunity. He wanted to become the pastor of that church. He tried that second week to run me off. And I went through, excuse me, hell on earth that second week. And there, he tried to turn people against me, discredit me, try to do everything he could to cause uh, me to leave that church. But I had a word from the Lord before I got there that I was that pastor. If I didn't have that word, that thus saith the Lord, that witness, that strong in me, I would have probably left. But I had that word, and I stood up, and I stood before the congregation, and thank God he left, and I stayed there to continue to pastor. But I had a mess to clean up. Because I ignored my witness, it cost me. Whenever we ignore that witness, it'll cost us. One other ex ex example of this uh, was when I was first uh, called into the ministry. Uh, there was two Bible schools I was actually praying about going to. And I grabbed a magazine of, of the one and I picked it up. It was called the Word of Faith, and I was I, I'd read through it. And of course, the other Bible school was closer. It, it was a lot closer. It wouldn't require me to sell my house and sell everything and, and go the whole way to Oklahoma. But when I picked up the one magazine, it was alive to me. It just seemed like everything spoke to me. The pages were this far off off of the magazine. And I picked up the other one. I tried to make it fit. I tried to make it feel comfortable. I tried to get a witness because it was just the next state up. And I thought, well, this is convenient. This won't cost me as much. What is that? Leaning to my own understanding, isn't it? Where I just needed to trust in the Lord. And finally, I got that revelation, got that witness, and I wound up going where my heart was directing me and not my pocketbook and not what was convenient and not what was uh, seemed to be the, the easy thing to do. But I'm telling you what, I never regret making that decision. And I sold everything I had and I went there and I've never been without since because I followed that inward witness. 
I followed that witness. Uh, Bible says, let this mind be in you which is in Christ Jesus. We need to become God inside minded. My sheep know my voice. Didn't just say believe, says no. Paul said, I know whom I have believed. I want to make a statement before we close here today. Uh, following peace is following the Holy Ghost. Following peace is is following the Holy Ghost. In Colossians, the third chapter, it talks about this. It talks about letting peace. If you read it in the Amplified Bible, it says, let peace be the umpire of your heart and your soul. So I begin to realize when I get peace down inside here, this is where my spirit is. It's in the center of my being. When I get peace inside, I know that's God. When, I, when there's confusion... When there's fear, I need to back up and keep on praying until I get that note of peace. Till I get that know that I know that I know. The Bible said that we have a witness in ourselves that we're born again. That witness is on inside of me. I know I'm born again. I know when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. I have that knowing on the inside. There comes a point in time where your believing changes to knowing. And when you have that knowing, it's a knowing that cannot be denied. And when you have that knowing that cannot be denied, that's the witness of the Spirit telling you this is the way to go. Walk in it. Praise God. Well, I hope this is helping you because I'm getting blessed myself. Praise God. <laughs> I'm getting blessed myself. God wants to lead us because He came to cause our disconnection to be connected at once again. God was raised Jesus from the dead and he brought that resurrection connection between him and me. And he can do it for you and him as well. If you've not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, just bow your head with me now and pray. Ask the Lord to come into your heart. Father, I thank you. I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my life and quicken me and I, I believe that you died and you rose the third day. And I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord. God bless you. If you prayed that prayer, let us know. I trust that something that was said today is ministered to your heart. Before we close today, I'd like to invite you to become a partner with Back to the Rock Ministries and broadcast. What we're looking for is people to hook up with us in prayer. If you'd spend a few minutes as you think about us interceding, the doors would be open. Uh, we'd be grateful for that. Also, write us a letter or slip us a note. Uh, Back the Rock Ministries, Box 244, Fayetteville, Pennsylvania, 17222. Let us know if we've helped you in any way. Slip us a prayer request. And if you have the ability to do it and the grace to do it, please sow us a seed of any amount. A one-time gift or a monthly gift of any amount, we would appreciate that. God bless you. Keep us in your prayers. We'll pray for you. We'll make you that promise. Let's partner up together. Stay tuned in in the next couple of weeks for another broadcast of Back to the Rock. Remember, when you're on the rock, you cannot roll.